If I can have your attention here in the media center, we are now joined by Dale Earnhardt Jr., driver number 88, Mountain Dew Chevrolet for Hendrick Motorsports. Dale, making your final laps around Talladega Super Speedway, a place that's very special to you. How special is this weekend going to be for you overall? Well, you know, it, uh, it is a track we've had a lot of success at, and um, we've been – you know, looking at this race is a great opportunity for us to come in and get an awesome uh, run or finish and maybe a win. So just uh, been focusing on the car and trying to get the car to be as good as, as possible, make sure it's driving the way we need to drive it so we can be aggressive in the race. And, um, you know, all the usual things that you think about and are concerned with on our, any given race weekend, that's what we're dealing with. Haven't really thought beyond uh, the usual emotions and and uh, anticipations that you ha you have every every race. So, um, but I do know this place has been great to me, and and definitely was. Uh, we got a lot of fans and uh, that come see us run here because they, they they see it as a great opportunity for to see us run well. So there's some uh, you know con there's consistent you know I, I wouldn't call it pressure, but there's you know there's motivation. To, uh, to 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 do well and run hard for all the folks that have come to see it happen. So um, I'm sure there's a few extra here this particular weekend, considering it's our last trip here, and uh, so that's more motivation. So I'm excited, looking forward to the race to get started on Sunday, and hoping we can get up there and get those give everybody that's going to be pulling for us a reason to cheer and uh, hope they leave leave the track Sunday satisfied. Okay, if you have a question for Dale, raise your hand. We'll get a wireless mic to you. We'll start with Mike and then go to Dustin and then to Bob. Mike Henry, USA Today. Dale, we know one big thing you're going to do next year. What other retirement plans do you have? Uh, going to do a cruise to Kannapolis or, you know, some some big trip? or other, what, what are the plans that you got on the docket? Oh, there's no plans. Um, I wish I had uh something to tell you but i'm going to <clears throat> considering that i've never you know worked as a broadcaster before i'm going to spend all my time trying to prepare myself nbc is going to connect me with and put me in front of people that can help me get prepared for that job and understand the work that i need to do and should do to to, to stay prepared and um I got to learn all that in a short period of time, and uh, so I'll be pretty pretty busy doing that to make sure when I go uh, to work in July f that I'm ready and I feel confident and can do a good job. So I, um, yeah, I mean, other than that, can't really think of anything that stands out that that y'all might have interest in, other than just uh, my sister bought some property. She was living on the uh, inside the gate out there where we're at, and, and she bought some property down the road. So I'm moving my mom into, into Kelly's house, and, and um, she's excited about that. So we've been working on that. Amy's been helping with that, and that's been a really fun experience because mom's just over, over the moon about it. And uh, so that's been a fun little project for us. And as soon as she gets moved in there, maybe – on one of my uh, first weekends away from the track, we'll, we'll get a, uh, have us a pool party or something. That's probably about as exciting as it's going to be. Okay, we're going to go to Dustin, then to Bob, then to Claire, then to Kelly. Dustin Long, NBC Sports. Dale, what are you going to miss about plate racing? You know, it's a, it, it, it's hard to say because it's it you either love it or or you you hate it. <laughs> Um, it seems like there's no middle ground. Um, I, you know, I, I always enjoy coming to the track and trying to figure out what's working in the draft and what's changed. And 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 as you change the cars, and and we're going to have a brand new uh, Camaro next year. How the, you know what's how's that going to you know how how will that have work in the draft? And and, and I always kind of like to find that out. And um, you know, just being able to make moves and find your way up toward the front and 
you know that that was that's always fun when you when you do something that that um, that your team gets excited about or or the fans that are watching get excited about. I'll miss I'll miss that. Um, you know, running a track wide open. Don't do that too much. It's pretty fun. I'll miss that. And uh, you know, these are they're so you know the the tracks are are so impressive the size and and the you know how the cars race around them um i miss that a little bit but i still come and watch it and still uh get an understanding and of of exactly how the cars are working and what's how the draft is working and i'll see things visually that that stand out to me and help me understand what's going on but um never will be able to replace that actual experience of of doing it Mm, I don't. I, you know that the. I don't know that I'll miss one more than the other. I really enjoy racing here. I really enjoy racing at Martinsville. Two completely different style of events and disciplines, and and I'll miss a little bit of something about every place that we run at. All the tracks have character and personality, and the locations themselves and and experiences. Uh, in and around the event and uh, you know there'll, there'll be a lot of reasons to miss all the tracks and competing on them and even the road courses we'll go to bob then the claire b then the kelly crandall and then jim Mutter. i'm bob pocker cspn um i have never heard a driver say that they wanted to wear the helmet cam because it mo would motivate them to make moves like you said on your podcast yep um are you just different than other guys that you need something else to motivate you um, when you're out there? And what is it about being just kind of part of the showman type aspect of it that makes you want to have it? Yeah, I wanted to wear it one time before the end of the year. So if I talk, you know, if we saw it next year, I could talk about it and, you know, with some experience. Um, the, um, you know, it's it's a little, it adds a little weight to the helmet and, and just you know, we're working on the visor to create some visibility, uh, fix and correct some visibility issues with the mirror and, and uh, other things. I'm hoping to run it. I, I'm making adjustments on it now. We're going to run it again tomorrow in qualifying. But if I can't get it to where I can see the way I want, I'm, I'm not going to race it. But I, uh, I've always felt like that, No, you know, if, if, any, if it motivated you, uh, bring it on, you know, add it to the, add it to the puzzle. And I know, um, that when we come here, for example, people want to see us go to the front. People want to, you know, our fans want to see us take the lead as fast as we possibly can take it. They want to see us in the lead every lap. And I can see in the grandstands, the reaction when we have taken the lead and come around the turn four or on the front straightaway. So that's motivating. I know that that's there, and that pushes me all day at these plate tracks um, to, to do as much as I can to get into the lead and stay there. And anything that motivates you, I think you should welcome. And, and I thought that the helmet cam would do the same thing. Folks at home could be seeing what we're seeing, and <clears throat> I'd want to be able to show them something that was interesting. And so um, I don't think it'll make me drive any differently. I, I just know that it's uh, anything that motivates you is good for you. So add it, add it all on, and the more the merrier for that. Go next to Claire B., then to Kelly, then to Jim, then to Chris Knight. Claire B. Lang, Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. I have two quick questions. I'll put them quickly into one. The first is if you could talk about Amy driving the pace car, <laughs> which is really cool. And the second is uh, people seem to like you being opinionated, as you have been lately. How opinionated do you intend to be on television since you do sort of sway the fans and they kind of go where you go? Have you thought about how opinionated you'll be able to be on TV? Well, the, there's a fine line. I'm, to be able to understand what is going on in the sport to know what you need to know and have as much information and knowledge about what's happening down in the garage you got to have great connections with all those drivers crew chiefs and so forth and i've had conversations with uh, some of the broadcasters and and there's a there's a you have to be careful about how you um 
how you speak about individuals because they take that stuff personally. Being being a driver, I'm the same way. And you need that connection and communi- be able to have that instant communication. Uh, so, And they can shut that off if they don't want to deal with you. So um, I think being honest is, is great, but um, there is – uh, there, there is a such thing as being too critical, and I think that I'll have to learn what that is. And, and you know, I won't have, it, I won't be perfect right out of the gate, and I won't get it right every time. And it, even when I am opinionated, I, I always end up learning something. Either there's more to it than what I've, what I initially thought, or, or uh, you hear, you hear a little bit about the other, other argument or the other side of the argument, but. Um, I don't know if that's really what people like about me is the fact that I'm that opinionated. I think that um, um, sometimes being being a bit too opinionated can get yourself into trouble. But um, I'll just see how it goes. I really, you know, I think we were if if I um, been watching Tony Romo, and if I'm half as good as he is, I'll be happy. I mean, that guy's just awesome, and he's doing such a great job. And he sounds like he's sitting right there next to you on the couch, just w- talking about the game with you, you know, like a best friend. And um, it's easy to listen to, and he does such a good job with it. He doesn't try to be anything he's not. And hopefully, if uh, if I can maintain that, and certainly I'll get better with more reps, just like anything else. The more you do it, the more confidence you get in yourself. I think the main thing for me is just building confidence, and that's going to start with being prepared and working in those initial six months of the seat of the first of next year to try to be prepared as I can. So, but I don't, you know, I think they hired me to be myself and I'll try to get in there and, and, uh, keep that going. But, <clears throat> but I know that <clears throat> just go, just knowing what Jeff went through with a few guys and talking to Latart and listening to their advice, it's, it's, um, you know, you just don't jump in there and just get all critical on the drivers and stuff because that'll make you a lot of enemies in the garage, and you need those relationships to have that ability to communicate and stay up to date on what's happening in this sport. So, if you, um, you know, if you if you if you're hacking on the drivers, they're going to stop dealing with you and not want to not want to talk to you. What about anti-driver? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I, you know, I she, I was I don't know if who was more excited about that, me or her, but she. Uh, she asked me about it and said, what do you think? I said, man, if you get an opportunity, and if you get asked to do that, you have to do it. I know a lot of people uh, are, you know, I know, I know a lot of fans are probably like, what, what? I don't understand how she got that opportunity. <laughs> but um, they wouldn't turn it down either, you know. <laughs> so I told her to go for it. She's excited. It makes me happy that she's she even thinks it's cool. Um and so, and Kelly drove the pace car for the late model race, and I, I, you know that that was a great experience for Kelly. And so, I'm I was happy about it. I was like, man, yeah, go do it. That sounds like a great. It just sounds like something fun to do, and 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 nobody would really want to turn that down. So, hopefully, she has. Hopefully, she's you know it's a good experience for her that day, and I'm sure she's going to do fine. I don't know. Probably anybody in this room should be able to do it at Martinsville. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go next to Kelly, and then we'll go to Chris Knight. Kelly Crandall, Racer.com. Dale, speaking of motivation, you said in your appreciation clip this week that after winning the July Daytona race, that that kind of led to your some, o- your some other success, including here at Talladega, because you wanted to prove to people that it wasn't a fluke in the sense of those who called it, yeah. um, you know, said that your car was illegal. How how badly and how long did that stick with you when it came to running at Daytona and Talladega? I, um, Mike Davis has, he used to work for Jimmy Spencer, and Jimmy Spencer's the guy that got out of his car that night after that race and said, boy, that's fishy how good that car was. And Mike, we used to work for Jimmy Spencer, and he has two of Jimmy's die casts on his cabinet in his office. And every time I walk in that office and see those die casts, I, that's the only thing I think about. So it bothers me today. Um, you know, I, I I don't know. You know, a lot of times, myself included, you don't think before you speak, but um, that was an incredible night for us in 2001 when we won that race. And I just felt like that if even if he did feel that way, um, I was disappointed that he 
that he would do that and say that. And for us to come back here the next race and win and then have success over the next several years sort of was like, hey, you know, it's not a it, – it wasn't a one-race fluke or, or, or an illegal car. That's just how good our program was at the plate tracks, if you guys remember um, that – the partnership that we put together with Petrie and RCR and all that stuff was geared directly toward making our plate cars better. And those three teams, even Petrie's stuff was amazing at the plate tracks, always running up front. So, um, but I just was like, man, I, you know, of course, you know, it's Jimmy Spencer. It's the kind of thing he does, but I, um, <laughs> I never got, I never really thought that, I never really liked that too much and haven't, um, haven't forgotten about it. I guess you can't hard to forget something like that. But um, it was nice to come. You know, it was nice to keep winning and show people that that was legit. Because that was like for me. You know, uh, that's the stuff movies are made of. That that come to come back there after Dad passed away and win that race is just the greatest thing I could imagine happening for me. So or anybody else. All his fans. All our family. I mean, all our family back home. His brothers, sisters. That was a big deal to all of them, you know. It was a crazy experience. Go next to Chris. Chris Knight, CatchTrends.com. Dale, with, how will stage racing cha change the complexity of this race on Sunday? Um, what, what do you think we can expect in being in a restrictor plate race and the first time we're seeing stage racing in, in the playoffs? And are you an advocate to see any changes for stage racing at all next year as far as maybe caution left not counting or something along those lines? Yeah, I really don't have a, uh, an opinion I, I, right now. I mean, I'm sure it could change, but um, haven't I haven't um, – I don't think the drivers uh, – I don't hear much about that from the other drivers in conversation. I know the fans do talk about it as far as the caution laps counting and so forth. But in the car, it don't really feel like a, the cautions are any longer or longer than normal. Um, I've gotten really – accustomed to it and think it's really a, uh, helped the sport. I don't know how you make it better. I'm sure you could if you thought about it, but um, I think it's really Im improved the uh, the races and made them made them more exciting and intense inside the car. And I, th I assume if that's going on, it's it's transcending out, you know, across the television or, or into the grandstands and people are seeing that intensity. So, um, I kind of like it, but I don't really know how it's going to affect the race on on Sunday. I I know that it was a little funky in Daytona at the 500. Guys were pitting early and so forth, and I don't know what you'll see. Um, I think it'll be similar to what you know the races look like at Daytona, and and it'll they should run pretty traditional to what we've seen over the last several weeks. I don't know that anybody will be pulling any crazy strategy or going really outside the box i mean especially these guys are in the chase to get like when you're in the when you're in the playoffs it kind of it's, it's hard to go outside the box <laughs> you know you just do whatever else in the playoffs are doing um unless you're a guy that's got to you know throw a hail mary dale before we continue on here i've got russell brandon with the speedway grant lynch you guys have a lot of special guests with you today so why don't you come and introduce yeah, we're thrilled today to have our, the Board of Directors uh, from the International Motorsports Hall of Fame. Of course, he said Grant Lynch, our Chairman. Senator Gerald Dial, who's the Chairman of the Board of the International Motorsports Hall of Fame. So we'll get them just to sit down for a second. Grant's got a few things he wants to go over first. Uh, first off, Dale, uh, this is your retirement tour, so to speak. And I don't know anywhere you can go that there's any more people that have loved what you do at that racetrack. Uh, your dad was the same way here. And on behalf of everybody at Talladega, all the race fans, millions of race fans that watched you race here, we just thank you for what you've done. Uh, watching you go to the front, you've said it before, you can hear it in the car. And it's just a thrill to have been here and watch you and your dad throughout the years. And so then you say, okay, what do you do for somebody arguably has got everything he needs? <laughs> so you say, well, let's try to give him something he doesn't know he, he needs, but he might want. So we have here, Russell's gonna unveil him, Erskine Funderburg with our <laughs> White Flag Club. He has always helped us in Victory Lane, and we always have produced more champagne bottles than we use. You sprayed a lot of those in your <laughs> career. The first one here 
is the same champagne bottle we gave. This is senior, right? Yes. This was the bottle your dad sprayed, just came out of the same box your dad sprayed on his last victory here. Erskine gave us this one back from his collection. He snuck out of Victory Lane. So give <laughs> Erskine some credit for giving this up. So this is the first one. Nice. And we know what you think about history. This is an exact bottle that you sprayed at your first victory here. And Erskine gave us this for your collection too. Here. Send her to stand up real quick. Send her to dial's coming in just a minute. I'll oh, get that. Thank you, Russell. Hold it up. Okay, am I doing right, Russell? Everybody look, see she needs straight forward. All right. All right. Let's see. Now, here comes the Russell play. Get ready. There you go. You want me to give Dale Jr. a matchbox car <laughs> and he's already signed it? Yeah, he signed it for me last year. We came to it was part of the Alabama game. Remember that? That's right. Oh, yeah. Senator Dow, well, don't you think you can take Grant, over at this point? Uh, let, let me say something. Uh, I think we can do better than that. Uh, I think we can do a lot better. Uh, Dale Jr., you, you're the epitome of uh, Talladega and Alabama. You have really put us on the map. You are an Alabamian. Not by birth, but by adoption. You know the governor has declared Sunday Dale Earnhardt Jr. Day, and that's a great honor. So, so we're excited about being here. My board is here. We chair the International Motorsports Hall of Fame board across the street, and uh, we think that we can do a little better than this. So we're gonna we're gonna ask you to step outside. But let me tell you, you talk about what you're gonna do. You could get in politics, but don't come back and run about it against our governor. We love her. Run somewhere <laughs> else. But uh, we think politics would be a great thing for you. You could lead a lot in that arena, and we look forward to seeing your future. But. We won't step outside. We That's think right. we might make right. a little better than a. Uh, I'd, I'd like a, to ask if everybody, if Dale and Grant and Senator, y'all would wait here just a second. All my media, if you go out, 